All right, well, let's start with our problem. You are conducting an experiment and to help minimize the risk, okay, that's good, of the process, you need to find the value A greater than zero so the average rate of change on the interval between zero and A for a function is minimal. Okay, so we're trying to somehow minimize this average rate of change. And our options, one, two, three, four, five, classic. All right, take a second. If you need, you can pause. All right, do we have an answer? Is it one, is it two, three, four, five? Well, let's find out. So what do we need? Well, we need to talk about average rate of change. Like what? That's so long ago. But you know, you still have to know stuff. So average rate of change on the interval from zero to a uh, would be what? f of a minus f of zero over a minus zero. So you say, well, what's f of a? 2a to the fourth minus 3a cubed minus 36a squared plus 42a plus 250. Subtract f of zero, 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 250. Divide by a minus zero, which is a. Well, the 250s cancel. Everything's divisible by a. That gives us 2a cubed minus 3a squared minus 36a plus 42. And, and so let's call this a function. We'll call it g of a. That's what we're trying to minimize. All right. Well, take the derivative. g prime of a at 6a squared minus 6a minus 36. You can factor the 6 out. a squared minus a minus 6. And you say, ah, okay, great. Now what? Well, it factors. Ha! Huh. What are the odds? Factors as a minus three, a plus two, a squared two a minus three a minus six. Perfect. And uh, we set it equal to zero. That leads us to two possibilities. A is three or a is negative two. But of course we want a positive. That gives us only one option. And so the answer is C. There we go. Did you get it? I hope so. All right. On to today's thought. To be able to make progress, we must learn how to handle being uncomfortable. You know, a lot of times it's like, I like being comfortable. I know, it's a wonderful thing being comfortable, but oftentimes to make the great progress, there's challenges, there's obstacles, there's things to overcome. And so, if we want to be able to meet those, we have to be able to work through the challenges. And so don't be like, ah, I don't want to do this. That's uncomfortable. I want to find the easy way. No, there's no royal road to learning math. You have to work through the process. Learn to sort of, for lack of a better word, have the grit to be able to go and work your way through it because it's worth it. It's worth it. All right, well, what's today? Well, we're going back and revisiting indeterminate forms. Now, we call these more work, more work. Well, what are these indeterminate forms? Well, there's a classic indeterminate form, zero over zero. Then I, what I like to call infinity classic, infinity over infinity. But there's other indeterminate forms, infinity minus infinity, zero times infinity, zero to the zero, one to the infinity. What do all of these have in common? They're all ambiguous. So, all right, well, that's why we have to do more work because we don't know a priori what they are. We have to ask what they should be, which sounds like limits. So yes, we, we spent a lot of time learning to do limits and and figured out how to do things such as like sine x over x goes to one, or doing algebra. But we have tools. And now, the great aha is we can use our tools. So in particular, we can use our tools for derivatives to help us figure out limits which involve these indeterminate forms. And 
it leads us to one of our favorite topics in calculus, le hopital. Oh, le hopital, mon ami. Oh, oh yes, le hopital. What does le hopital say? Well, the punch sign, this is what people remember, says, suppose you have a fraction, f of x over g of x, and it's one of our two indeterminate forms, 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And it says, look, don't do f of x over g of x. Do f prime of x over g prime of x. And take that limit. All right, so let's be a little bit more precise. We need a couple of things. We need that we can take derivatives. Well, that makes sense because there's derivatives here. We need that we're doing indeterminate forms. Well, yeah, if we're not indeterminate, there's no ambiguity. Yeah, of course. Why would we bother? Okay, so we need to get precise these 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. It has to look like this. And then there's a small technical one. We often forget to say it, but basically it says, suppose that this limit actually does exist. And if that's true, then these limits agree. So our, our great aha is to say, look, if we're trying to do the limit of f of x over g of x, and we're having a hard time, let's look at f prime of x over g prime of x. Why? Maybe, maybe that's an easier limit. Now, be careful. It looks like there's derivatives involved, so you might say, ah, it's like a quotient rule, right? No, no, it's the quotient rule we wish was the quotient rule. It's so much simpler. It says, hey, take the derivative of the top, take the derivative of the bottom. Boom, booyah, nothing confusing. Also, there's another note here. It says, look, if you need it, you can do it a couple times. So sometimes you'll say, ah, I don't know what this goes to. And then you say, well, let's try this. And you say, ah, I know what this goes to either. You say, okay, do it again and again and again as needed until either you say, look, hopeless, hopeless. Or you get to a point where you say, okay, I have an answer. And if you have an answer, life is good. All right, so that's the idea. It's a beautiful idea. And so we're going to do lots and lots of examples. And so let's uh, go through and uh, try some examples. All right. So we'll start. We have uh, three examples here. Let's see. Now notice some involve different symbols. Here's a theta. Here's a t. Here's an x. That's fine. It doesn't have to be x. It can be anything. All right. So first thing we check, you say, all right, What's currently happening? Because you should always, always plug in first, right? Remember, we'll write this down as a pro tip. You know, always plug in first. Why? Well, because maybe you don't have to do anything. And sometimes we get these fancy tools and we're like, ah, oh, let's use our fancy tool. But if you don't need to use your fancy tool, don't use it. Just say, hey, I can go and plug in. So, you always check. So, what's this currently going to? Well, when you plug in 0, you get 0. Minus sine of 0 is 0. And then downstairs, you get 0. You say, cool. 0 over 0. Indeterminate. So, we can do the following. We can say, look, this is equal to by le hopital. So, I, I use this LH to remind ourselves that we are doing le hopital. You can even do a little, little le hopital, mon ami. Ho, 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 ho. And, you know, it's like, oh yes, that's right. So we're still taking a limit. Theta goes to zero. Take the derivative of the top. Three minus cosine theta. Take the derivative of the bottom. One. Now, plug in. And uh, what do we see? Well, we see we're not getting a zero downstairs, our infinity. So we know it's not indeterminate. That means game over, man. Game over. We're going to get an answer. 3 minus 1 over 1, and so our answer is 2. All right, great. And that's as easy as it is. Now, this is one we can actually check because we've done things like this before. We can say, hey, this is the same as the limit as theta goes to 0 and break it into two pieces. 3 theta over theta is 3, and sine theta over theta is sine theta over theta. Well, 3... That goes to 3, and sine theta over theta 
That goes to 1. So this goes to 3 minus 1, which is 2. See? Now you might say, well, why do this new approach, Le Hopital, when the old approach works? Well, because Le Hopital does things so much simpler. And a lot of problems that we're going to look at, the old approach, hopeless, hopeless. All right. Now, next one. Limit as t goes to 0, sine of 5t over e to the 2t minus 1. Okay, plug in. What is happening here? We get sine of 0 upstairs, e to the 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Aha! 0 over 0, meaning more work. More work. Right, means le hopital. Okay, so we're going to a little short on space, so le hopital. We apply le hopital, still limit as t goes to 0. Now, upstairs, root of sine 5t, root of sine cosine. And then chain rule, don't forget the 5. Downstairs, root of e to the 2t, well, root of an exponential function, exponential function again. Plug the inside in, and then time by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of minus 1 is 0. Now, plug in. Are we getting 0 over 0? No. So it's like, great. That means we're done. We just have to plug in. Cosine of 0? 1. So upstairs, 5. E to 0? 1. Downstairs, 2. 5 halves. We're done. Nice. All right, our third one. Find the limit as x goes to 0 of x minus 1 half sine 2x divided by tangent of x minus x. All right, what do we do? Well, let's check. First off, what's happening upstairs? 0 and sine of 0 makes 0. Downstairs, tangent of 0 is 0, minus 0 is 0. All right, well, hmm. More work, right? Yes. Now, I will say you could do this one by doing, again, a sine theta over theta, but we're practicing the hopital. So we're going to apply the hopital. Ah, le hopital, mon ami. <laughs> okay. All right. So, limit as x goes to 0. We have upstairs, derivative 1. The derivative of sine will be cosine. So it'll be cosine 2x times the 2 there's already half there, so we could write it as minus a half times 2 cosine 2x. So the 2 and the half actually cancel. That's all right. Downstairs, so you can square it x and minus 1. Okay, now, what is this going to? Well, let's check. We have 1 minus cosine of 0. That's 1 minus 1, which is 0. Secant of 0 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 over 0. Ah! Ah! What do we do? Well, aha! Le hopital! Ah, le hopital, mon ami! All right. Now, I, I have to say, you don't always have to do the but, you know, it helps to sort of embed it. Now, remember, you have to check. So, sometimes problems will say, justify justify why you can do the hopital and that's this hey i'm getting a zero over zero here all right so one more take a derivative well the one goes away the derivative of cosine is negative sine well, there's already a negative so that'll become a positive and then don't forget chain rule two sine two x downstairs derivative of secant uh, well, secant squared, chain rule. So 2 times secant x times the derivative of secant, which is secant x tangent x. All right. Great. And the derivative of minus 1 is 0. Well, hmm. Let's clean that up a little bit. Now, notice we have a 2 upstairs, a 2 downstairs. So that's fine. So that's the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of 2x over, and secant times secant makes a secant squared x, and then we have a tangent of x. Now, what happens? This goes to, derivative, sorry, not derivative, sine of 0, 
is 0. Secant of 0 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Tangent of 0 is 0. It's 0 over 0. So what do we do? Aha! We do le hopital. Okay, so le hopital. <laughs> right? We've got to get that enthusiasm there. So this becomes the limit as x goes to 0 of what? Well, uh, derivative of sine 2x is 2 cosine 2x, and then downstairs, all right, product rule, derivative of secant squared, 2 secant of x times derivative of secant, which is secant x tangent x, times, so that's the derivative of secant squared, so derivative of the first times the second, so we're doing product rule, plus the first, secant squared of x, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Okay, now, before you start panicking, like, are we going to have to keep going forever? No, no, we can already tell. It's game over, man, game over. Why? Look upstairs. What do you see? That's not going to be going to zero. And as soon as we see one of the top or bottom is not zero or not infinity, we're like, that's it. That's game. So what do we have upstairs? Two times cosine is zero. Well, that's two. Downstairs, secant of zero is one, and tangent of zero is zero. So two times one times one times zero times zero, zero. And here we have a bunch of secants. So it's one times one times one times one, which is a bunch of ones. So that leaves us with a final answer of 2. Okay, good. Now, could we get this uh, maybe a little bit faster? I don't know, maybe. But uh, look, we have to work through the process, right? Work through the process. Be patient. And uh, there you go. All right. Well, now that we've done some warm-ups, let's keep going. We're going to do a whole bunch of these, right? So the more that we do, the better that we get. So here's an interesting one. Given that f of x is twice differentiable, and this just says, hey, you can take two derivatives, then limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus 2f of x plus f of x minus h over h squared. Well, that kind of is implicit. What is this? Okay. So let's, so we have some space. Let's test what it is. So now h is what's changing. So x, treat that like a constant. So we would have f of x minus 2f of x plus f of x over 0 squared. Well, here, numerator, if we get the cancellation. Downstairs we have 0. That's 0 over 0. And that's, since we have the space, we'll write it down, indeterminate. More work. More work. All right, so we're going to do le hopital. Ah, le hopital, mon ami. <laughs> okay, so we're doing the hopital's rule. So we're going to take a limit. H goes to 0. Now, through to the bottom. Oh, that's a nice one. Remember, we're taking it with respect to h, because h, that's what's down here in this limit. So what's down in the limit tells you what you're taking the derivative with respect to. So derivative of h squared with respect to h, 2h. All right, the derivative of the first term, well, that'd be f prime of x plus h times the derivative of x plus h, which is 1. How about the middle term? What's the derivative of that? It's 0, because there's no h. It's a constant with respect to h. So remember, taking derivative with respect to h. How about the last term? Well, that's also f prime, x minus h, but times the derivative of the inside, well, there's a minus 1 in front of that h, so you get a minus. All right. Well, that seems a little bit simpler. Now, what's happening here? Well, let's check. We're a little bit nervous because we can spot a 0, so we're thinking it's probably going to be a more work. So downstairs is a 0. Upstairs, f prime of x minus f prime of x. Well, that's 0 over 0. We were right. It is 
more work. Okay, no worries. Well, what's the more work? It is, aha, yes, I, it is, Le Hopital. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do Le Hopital again. All right, so the limit, h goes to zero. Take a derivative downstairs. That's an easier derivative. And we're taking derivative with respect to h. We get two. How about upstairs? All right, so derivative of the first term. Well, we're taking derivative with respect to h. There's an h there. I have to do a chain rule. Derivative of the outside. Plug the inside in. Derivative of the inside would be one. Here, derivative of the outside. Plug the inside in. Derivative of the inside is a minus one. There's already a minus. Minus minus makes plus. Now, what we now know, without doing anything else, it's game over, man. Game over. Because that's not zero. So we're not heading to more work. We're heading to an answer. All right, so how do we get it? We put in h equals zero. So we have f double prime of x plus f double prime of x over two, which is f double prime of x. There you go. So we have that if f is twice differentiable, the limit is h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus two f of x plus f of x minus h over h squared is f double prime. Ah, cool. Now, you might say, well, that was a cute little result, but actually, this has applications. So in particular, when you look at real world, and you say, look, I don't have a function. I have lots of data. So this application, this is how we can take a second derivative of functions where we only have data. So in other words, we have maybe, you know, we've sampled it at, at very small steps. Uh, and we say, can I get a good estimate for what the second derivative looks like? And the answer is yes. So this is in what's known as numerical analysis. So how do we use data to estimate things like derivatives and second derivatives and so forth and so on? And this says, here's a great way to do a second derivative using data. So, all right, so good, nice. Well, let's keep going. Let's see how many we can do. Now, here's some things. Oh, this is a little bit different. Find the limit as y goes to zero from above of y log y. Now, you might say, okay, that's one side limit. Why? Oh you know, yeah, we're taking limits of y, but no, no. Why a one-sided limit? Well, because the log only makes sense if you plug in a positive number. Okay, so that's why we're, we're gonna do a one-sided limit. Now, we have an issue here. What's going on? Well, if you know about log of y, we can sketch it really quickly. It looks something like this. So here's log of y. And what's happening is as we approach zero, it's heading off towards negative infinity. So this is approaching zero times negative infinity. So in other words, something very small, something very big. And small times big is more work, more work. We don't know. So it really matters. It's like, well, how small is small? How big is big? A priori, it's not so clear. And that's why we got to do something to figure it out. Now, we'd like to apply the Hopital. However, we can't. Not yet. So the Hopital works for indeterminate forms, which look like 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. The problem here is that it doesn't work for this kind of form. So what do you do? You make it work. So how do we make it work? We say, well, look, we've got to make it into a fraction. So we have our great aha. Even though this is a fairly nice way for us to write it, we're going to rewrite it as a fraction. How do you do that? You take one of the terms and move it downstairs. Now, there's two ways we could do that. We could say, look, y log y 
there's two parts. So we could move the y term downstairs and say this is log y over, and to move it downstairs is to multiply by the reciprocal 1 over y. Or we can move the log y downstairs. So we could say this is y over 1 over log y. Now, which one should we use? And you might say, does it matter? Uh, if you think about it, this one right now, this is going to infinity over infinity, well, technically minus infinity over infinity. And here, this one is going to 0 over 0. And you say, aha, is it the 0 over 0 one? Or is there something else? Is there a preferred way to do it? And the answer is there definitely is a preferred way. Do you know which one? Think about it for a second. Which one is going to be the one which will be less painful for us? Well, remember what you have to do. You have to take a derivative. So think about the derivatives. Log y, that's reasonable, becomes a 1 over y. And 1 over y, again, not bad. That's minus 1 over y squared. Y, beautiful derivative. 1 over log y, well, you're going to have to do a chain rule. And you'll end up with uh, minus 1 over y times log y squared. Wait, what? That means when you take this derivative, the log is still there. In other words, it hasn't gotten better. It's gotten worse. So this is the case where we say, hey, we're going to make a choice. We're going to choose the log y over 1 over y because we anticipate that our next step, it'll make it simpler. Now, sometimes it's not so hard to figure out. Sometimes you don't know. So what do you do? You try something. And if it doesn't work, try something else, right? If it's getting worse and worse and worse, that means pull back and think of a different plan. Okay, so let's see what, what happens now. So we know limit as y goes to 0 from above of y log y. We can rewrite this. This is limit as so y goes from 0 from above. And we're just rewriting the function. So it's the same limit, no, no tricks. Uh, log y and 1 over y will make it calculus friendly as y to the negative 1. We've already checked it's blowing up to something indeterminate, blowing up both top and bottom. So we can pull out all right, so it's still same as before, limit, still one-sided. No, there's nothing about the hopital that, that says it has to be a two-sided limit. One-sided limits are A-OK -okay in our book. So, get rid of the top, get rid of log y, 1 over y. Downstairs, you get rid of this, the minus 1 comes down y to the minus 2. Or if you like, this is the limit. So y goes from 0 from above. And uh, you can multiply top and bottom by y squared. If you multiply by y squared downstairs, you get y to the 0, which is 1. Don't forget that minus sign from the downstairs. And then when you multiply upstairs, you end up with y. So you end up with negative y. Well, that sounds like a pretty easy limit. So as y goes to 0, negative y goes to negative 0. Or, well, we usually just call it 0. And there you go. All right, so this is a case where you say, aha, it's going, you know, a small thing times a big thing. But it turns out the small thing is a lot smaller than the big thing is bigger. And so the small thing won in this case. So we got 0. It won't always be that way. It can be the case that 0 times infinity can be anything. And that's why we have to do the work. We have to put in the more work. We don't know. All right, well, let's try another problem. And we don't even have to move far. Let's look at this one. Find the limit as t goes to 0. What do we have? Well, we have 1 over zero, right? Because you put in t equals zero, you get zero here. Here you have one over zero. So one over zero, really you say one over small, 
1 over small is big. So it's infinity minus infinity. Aha! This means, no surprise, more work. Okay, so what's our issue? Our more work is our friend L'Hopital. But L'Hopital will only work if we have fractions. We don't have fractions right now. So we say, ah, well, let's make fractions. And uh, now previously we moved one of the terms downstairs, and that's not really something we can do. We don't really have a term upstairs, term downstairs. But what can we do? Well, one thing we can do is we can say, hey, I have two things being combined. Let's add them together. All right, so we're going to do some algebra. Ba -ba 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 algebra. Okay, so this will be the limit as t goes to zero. Ah, algebra, it's a great thing, right? Now, common denominator. They both have a t, uh, so we're going to need a 3, uh, and then a t squared, and a sine of 3t. So that will make a common denominator. Now, in the first term, we're missing the 3t, so that would put a 3t upstairs. In the second term, we have the 3t squared, so we're missing the sine of 3t. All right, so there is the result of adding these two together. So get a common denominator and say, okay, what are we missing upstairs in the first term? Subtract, what are we missing upstairs from the second term? Now, what is this doing? Well, let's plug in. When we plug in, we say, okay, this goes to upstairs, zero, minus zero is zero. Downstairs, zero times zero is zero, which equals more work. Okay, but very importantly, it's the right kind of more work. It's the kind of more work that we say, aha, we have tools. We can do things. So we pull out our tool. Le hopital. Ah, le hopital, mon ami. All right. So limit. T goes to zero. Of upstairs, we'll have three minus three cosine 3t, divide by, well, okay, product rule, true to the first, 6t sine 3t, plus, and then the first times root of the second. Now, derivative of sine is cosine, and you're going to bring a 3 out. So that makes it 9t squared cosine 3t. So this 9 is a combination of 3 and a 3 from the chain rule. All right, which goes to what? Well, plug in t equals 0. 3 minus 3 times 1, 0. Downstairs, we have uh, 0, sine of 0 is 0. 0 squared, 1, a bunch of zeros, 0 over 0, which means more work. Oh, my goodness. Lots of more work going on here. Well, of course, it's not it's too surprising. All right, well, okay, so let's do the work. So this equals by le hopital. All right, limit. Oh, I'm like, oh, Steve, you forgot the I did, but uh, that's okay, you'll forgive me. All right, upstairs, take the derivative. Derivative of three, zero. Derivative of cosine is sine. And then don't forget to do chain rule. So derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we'll end up with nine sine 3t. Downstairs, what will we have? Well, product rule. We'll have the derivative of the first, six times the sine 3t. And then plus, we'll have 6t times the derivative of sine. Well, that makes 18t cosine 3t. And then we have, from this term, the derivative of the first, 18t cosine 3t. And then we'll have plus 9t squared derivative of cosine it will be a negative sine. And then on 3 will come out, so minus 27t squared sine 3t. Okay.
Good. Well, maybe not good, but hmm. And uh, well, all right, we have nine sine three t over, we can do six sine three t plus 36 t cosine three t minus 27 t squared sine three t. Now, at this stage, you're probably like, huh, is this ever going to end? Can we just be done? Well, notice what's happening. What's going on? Well, we're still going to go, when we plug in zero upstairs, we get zero. Downstairs, we'll get a zero, and a zero because of the t, and a zero because of the t squared. So we're getting to zero over zero, which means more work. Now, we could do more work in two different ways. We could do one more iteration of L'Hopital, and that will get us our answer. Or we could say, hey, we can actually use old facts, which, for example, sine of blah over blah is one. We can use that. And uh, can we? Well, yes. Which way is the right way? Either one. Which way do you want to do it? Well, I don't know. I feel like in for a penny, in for a pound, right? So one last push. One more great, oh, and then we'll be done. Why? Well, let's do Le Hopital. And we have limit, t goes to zero. Here, derivative of sine, cosine, don't forget the three, 27, cosine three t. Downstairs, we'll have 18, because the three comes out, 18 cosine 3t and then uh, product rule derivative of the first is 36 and uh, cosine 3t and then derivative of the second will be a negative sign so that'll be minus 108t sine 3t and then here we'll have what uh, well we'll have the derivative of the first minus 54 t sine 3 t and then don't forget the derivative of the second and that would bring another 3 out so that would be easy. makes plus 81 t squared cosine 3 t okay now good news came over right because what do you see upstairs not zero so our answer we can now plug in here we get upstairs, 27 times cosine of zero, which is one, so 27. Downstairs, we'll have 18 plus 36. And then we'll get zero and zero and zero. So 18 plus 36 makes 54. So 27 over 54, one half. Whew! All that to get to a half. Well, like we said, it's gonna be work. And so we have to do the work. All right, well, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Well, here's a very nice fact. If f is continuous, then what that means is that you can push limits inside f. It's really one of the properties of being a continuous function. So it says, hey, if I have a limit as x goes to a, f of g of x, that's the same as the, the function of the limit as x goes to a of g of x. Now we're going to use this with one very nice special case. Namely, if f looks like log x, and g of x looks like function to a function. Now why? Well, function to a function is hard to work with. But... When you take a log, the functions when the exponent comes down. So, using the log, we take the log of both sides, it pulls the function down, and we can run our process much like we've already been doing. And then we just need to remember at the end that, hey, we started by taking a log, so make sure to account for that in our answer. All right, so let's try this out. Well, 
here is the limit. Now, what happens as x goes to infinity? So t here, arbitrary, 1 plus t over x to the power x. Well, what's happening is the inside is getting close to 1. The exponent is getting close to infinity, going to 1 to the infinity. 1 to the infinity is, no surprise, more work. But it's the kind of more work that is not 0 over 0. So we need an idea. And our, our idea is very simple. We're going to call this limit L. We're going to say, well, let's find not the limit of L. We're going to find the limit log of L. So because we can push the limit through the log, and we'll do it slowly in this case, this is the log of the limit, then what happens here, it says, hey, this is really the limit as x goes to infinity, log 1 plus t over x to the power x. All right, we push the log through. But now, aha, the x comes down, and so that's the limit as x goes to infinity, x log 1 plus t over x. But now, our great aha says, wait a second, what's happening here? Well, that's going to big, that's going to log of 1. Well, small. So we have big times small, which is more work. And at this point, you're like, ah! But it's a simpler kind of more work. We're closer to the kind that we're comfortable doing. So, what can we do? Well, let's move something downstairs. And because we want to take a derivative, we'll move just the x down. That's going to be easier for us to take a derivative of. So one log of 1 plus t over x stays upstairs. 1 over x goes downstairs. So this now is going to 0 over 0. So we're ready to say, aha, perfect. OK, so this becomes the limit as x goes to infinity. Take the derivative of the upstairs. So that would be 1 over the inside, 1 plus t over x, times the derivative of the inside, which is minus t over x squared. Remember, t is a constant, and the derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. Now, in the downstairs, the derivative of 1 over x, minus 1 over x squared. Well, good news. You see how you have that minus and that over x squared? Pew, 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 pew. So, this is the limit as x goes to infinity of t over 1 plus t over x. And that's a pretty straightforward limit because the only place there's an x is right there. And as x goes to infinity, that drives this term to 0, which says t. And so, is t our answer? And why not? Okay, it's not our answer. So t is not our answer. Now, what's the issue? Well, the issue here is, remember, what did we start by doing? We started by taking a log. So log of our answer is t. So if we want to get our answer, we've got to get rid of that log. So our answer will be e to the t. Right, because we're going to take the e to the log l is log, sorry, e to the log l is l, so l equals e to the t. All right, so there's our answer. Aha, nice, nice. Okay, good. Well, let's see, we're running short on time. Are there any other interesting ones? Oh, yeah, we should do this one really quickly. You're probably thinking, oh, I don't think that's going to be quick, Steve. Well, maybe. But the ideas, what do we see? Right now, it's going to infinity over infinity, right? Because we have t to infinity, t to the 3, 14 over e to the t. So we do le hopital, ah, le hopital. <laughs> so this becomes limit as t goes to infinity of 314, t to the 313, divided by e to the t. Say, great, now what? Well, that goes to infinity over infinity. Okay, so we do what? Le hopital. <laughs> okay. So we'll get limit, t goes to infinity. 314 times 313 times t to the 312 over 
e to the t, right? Because the derivative of e to the t is e to the t, which does what? Goes to infinity over infinity. So what do you do? Ah, oh, Lahopital once again. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have to keep going. But what do you notice? Well, what's happening is every time we do a Lahopital, the upstairs, it's shrinking in the exponent. Downstairs isn't changing at all. So you say, okay, after you do a Lahopital a lot of times, what will you have? Well, you'll get limit as t goes to infinity of 314 times 313 times all the way down to 1. But you'll have exhausted the t's over e to the t. Now, this is a giant number. But no matter how giant this number is, e to the t eventually is going to beat it. So it's a number over something big, which goes to 0. All right. So what does this teach us? Well, even though you have this huge polynomial, t to a big number, exponential beats it. So this is about order of growth. And this helps us say, oh, you know what? Polynomials are much smaller than exponentials. So exponential will always beat polynomial. On the other hand, polynomial is much bigger than logarithmic. And you can do a very similar argument here. So it's the idea of saying, how big are these things, relatively speaking? So in the race, exponential always beats out polynomial. Polynomial always beats out logarithmic. Which, by the way, that's why you invest when you're a young person, that exponential growth. Once you have exponential growth, that's hard to beat. Hard to beat. All right, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, yeah. Got to do this one. Classic problem. Okay, so... Find the limit as x goes to infinity of x plus sine x over x. So what's happening? Well, we get infinity over infinity, which means more work, right? So we do what? Well, we apply La Hopital. Aha! Uh -huh. oh, La Hopital. And this becomes the limit as x goes to infinity of, derivative of the upstairs, 1 plus cosine of x. We're the downstairs, 1. You say, ah, oh, well, that's great. Now, what's happening? 1 plus cosine of x. Well, okay, I understand the 1, but the cosine of x, that's going up and down, right? So what's the limit? This is no limit. It doesn't converge. Ah! So what does that mean about our original answer? What's our conclusion? So... Our conclusion is, the Hopital doesn't work. So the Hopital does not apply. Now remember, there was one of our assumptions that says, look, the Hopital only works if you actually have a limit that converges. If your limit doesn't converge, hopeless, hopeless. Well, okay, does that mean we'll never know this limit? No, actually we can so even though we have a tool that's wonderful, the Hopital, we have other ways to think about things. Well, break it up into two pieces. x over x is also known as 1, and sine of x over x is sine x over x. Now, this will go to 1. What happens to sine x over x? Well, sine of x is bounded, and x is big. So in other words, you have a small thing over a big thing. So the big thing dominates. And you can do this by uh, sandwiching or squeezing. There's a couple of names for it. But uh, the point is, that goes to zero. And so you can uh, say that the answer is one. So be careful. The Hopital does not always work. All right, we're almost out of time. So let's jump ahead and say, finally, what's the limit as t goes to 0, cosine t to the 1 over t squared? Our options, 0, 1 over e, a half, 1 over root e, 1. Pause if you want. Think about it. The answer, 1 over root e. And uh, 
there you go. All right, that's it. And uh, we will pick up again next time. Have a good day.